Turn with me tonight to Matthew, the 25th chapter. (coughs) And I want to read just verse 30 for the text. Matthew chapter 25, (coughs) verse 30. I was so thankful for the revival. Revival is a turning back to the Lord. That's what revival is. And it's also a refreshing And I think that uh, we all were refreshed by the blessings that we received during uh, the services that we had this week. And what we need to do now is just put those things to practice. I thought the message that uh, Brother DePriest brought uh, this morning about uh, firmness uh, with kindness. You know, there has to be that kindness and that love in the home, but there also has to be standards and firmness and I think that's just what a lot of folks don't understand about what the Bible teaches about marriage and the Christian home, that it's based on on holiness, and there's love there along with that. And it's not a matter of driving someone or making someone. It's a matter of leadership, and that starts with the husband. That starts with the father, that leadership and that... that, uh, that, uh, Uh, firmness as he was talking about and the kindness as well so let's just take that forward and apply it in our homes and God's going to bless that okay all right let's look at Matthew chapter 25 verse 30 and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth let's pray almighty God our father we bow before you tonight and we thank you Lord for your blessings And we just praise you, and we ask you now that that you'll just help us to be excited about serving Jesus. Lord, just uh, bless the church here. Lord, just help us to continue to uh, have revival. Help us to continue to follow the Lord and to grow in, in grace, to grow in Christ. We pray that you'll bless our homes, Lord, that we can have the kind of Christian homes that you want us to have. We pray for our nation that there will be revival. We pray for those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are in need. And we continue to pray that you'll use us to win souls. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach tonight on the subject, the unprofitable servant. In this chapter, if you read the 25th chapter of Matthew that I'm taking my text from, uh, there are some beautiful pictures, uh, some great pictures, I should say, of what it will be like when Jesus comes. In fact, that's what this whole chapter is about. It is about the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like this, and the kingdom of heaven will be like that when Jesus comes. He talks about, first of all, the ten virgins. And that's a picture of Jesus coming like a bridegroom. And those who are ready, those who are saved and who know the Lord... And, you know, there were five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. And the five wise virgins took extra oil with them. The five foolish virgins, their lamps went out. But the five wise virgins took extra oil with them. And when the cry went forth, the bride, behold, the bridegroom cometh, the five wise virgins had oil. I believe with all my heart the holy, the the oil in that uh, Uh, portion of scripture stands for the Holy Spirit, our closeness with God, our strength with the Lord, and that comes through uh, the Holy Spirit in our life. Let me ask you tonight, are you strong in the Lord? Are you ready to face the devil's attacks? Now God blesses us and praise the Lord for the blessings. There's nothing like being a Christian. But you know, there are times that we're going to have to fight battles and and we need to be close to the Lord and we need to be full of the Holy Spirit so that when those times come, we are strong enough. And so when Jesus comes, it's going to be those who are close to him, those who are following him, those who are faithful to him, those who have the Holy Spirit in their heart. The second thing that he gives here is the, the talents and that pictures Jesus coming to take an account You know, the good stewards uh, are saved. And that's what I'll be preaching on here in a moment. And it's the, uh, the the slothful steward, or the steward, I like to think of it as not trustworthy. 
That's the person that was rejected. But the important thing is we see that Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is, is like this when Jesus comes because Christ is going to take an account of his stewards. And we are responsible to him. Folks, there is such a thing as the great judgment bar of God. And people who are not saved are just not saved. And they're lost. But there's also the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ, will, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we, for the good things that we've done for the Lord, and I say underline for the Lord, not be, for people to see us or, or not in the wrong attitude. Sometimes you can do good things and do it in the wrong attitude. And you know, sometimes you can do good things and not really do it for the Lord. But those things we do for the Lord, that we, ser that, we, that we serve Him, we're going to receive reward for that. But the Bible tells us also that people are going to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. Loss because of the, the things that they fail to do for the Lord. And so Jesus said here in about the parable of the talents, uh, He said that there's an, uh, there's an accounting coming. We ought to all be aware of that. And the third thing was the sheep and the goats. And that pictures Jesus as the great king, which he is. He is Lord of lords. And he is king of kings. And he says that all nations, and I'm not going to get into the, the, the theology of it tonight because uh, people look at it differently, but it says that all nations will be gathered before him and he is going to separate them. He's going to put the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left hand, and those who are, who are the goats are going to depart into everlasting fire and those who are the sheep are going to go to heaven. Praise God. These are pictures, word pictures of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, I tell you, we need so much to be thinking about that today. I don't know that, I'm not telling you that Jesus is going to come tomorrow. I think we need to be ready if he would come today. Or if he would come tomorrow. I think we, would, we need to be filled with the Spirit so if he does not come for a long time, that we can serve him and that we can endure whatever, whatever we have to endure to meet him when he does come. That's what I teach about the second coming of Christ. But we need to have our eye on Jesus. We need to be looking at him. And we need to be studying the word and we need to know all that we can know that the Bible teaches about. We need to know about the tribulation. We need to know uh, what Daniel taught and we need to know what Zechariah taught and we need to study the word of God and we need to have our eyes glued on the second coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture of the church. Because folks, that's the blessed hope that we have. Are you ready tonight? If Jesus would come tonight, not telling you that he will. Most of you know that my, uh, my opinion, and that's all that anybody can really have. Nobody knows when Jesus is coming. My opinion is he will come about uh, maybe a little after the middle of the tribulation period. But the question is, am I ready tonight? If Jesus would come today, if Jesus were to come tonight, am I prayed up? Am I faithful to him? Am I serving him? Am I ready to meet him? First of all, the Lord placed a certain amount of trust in the man with one talent. Verse 14 and 15. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. You know, the Lord places trust in a person when he gives him a talent. And what a wonderful thing to be, to be a child of God. What a wonderful thing in this world in which we live and all of the, all of the, the, the sin and the wickedness and, and all of the doubt and, and, and the indecision and, and all the things in the world. What a wonderful thing to know you're saved. 